listening to In the Balance, the Iowa Judicial Branch podcast. Welcome to In the Balance, the Iowa Judicial Branch podcast. If you follow our podcast, you might be surprised to hear a new voice. I'm your new host, Avas Shrestam. I would like to thank our previous host, Marisa Gall, for her great work with the initial 39 episodes of In the Balance forming our viewers about Iowa Judicial Branch. Today, we look at the Iowa Business Courts. I'm very excited to host two separate guests for this podcast. I'm very honored to have Justice Thomas Waterman and Judge David Nelmark as our guest for today. Let's begin with the first guest, Justice Waterman. He was appointed to the Iowa Supreme Court in 2011 and has been continuously serving Iowa since then. Welcome to In the Balance, Justice Waterman. Thank you, Vash. I'm uh, delighted to be here. Oh, thank you so much. We can get all started talking about business court. So I really wanted to start by basic question is, what is a business court? So it, it, it's one of Iowa's uh, trial court specialty courts. You know, we have drug courts, family treatment courts, veteran courts, but the business court is designed to provide a specialized judging for uh, complex commercial litigation and business disputes. That's very interesting. And is it a typically civil cases that's being handled from there? Or how does it differ from juristic courts, regular cases? Right. Um, they're civil cases by definition. They have to have a threshold of $200,000. And, and then we have a, 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 a set of, of types of disputes that would qualify. Um, one main difference from other civil cases is that two judges are assigned, a, oh. uh, a trial judge and a, and a settlement conference judge. So you, in effect, get highly qualified, specialized free mediation at any point during the course of the case. That's and another difference is that the judges have statewide jurisdiction. They, a business court judge in Davenport regularly can go to Sioux City to try cases. So they go to the case as opposed to most trial judges remain in their respective mm -hmm. districts in one of Iowa's eight districts. That's definitely interesting. When you say about two different type of judges, what duties do they take having the same case assigned to two different judges? So the trial assigned primary judge will handle motion practice and, and provide a sort of hands-on judging throughout the, the life of the case. And a lot of times these disputes may start out with an emergency injunction hearing and be time intensive. Uh, but, but along the way, uh, most cases settle and with a, an assigned separate settlement conference judge, it provides some privacy and, and separation you avoid the conflicts of interest of a, of a trial judge who might be mm. deciding the merits of the dispute. You wouldn't want that judge to hear confidential judge, we're willing to pay X dollars to get oh. rid of this. And so, you, so it's be better to have two different people, two different judges for those very different roles. So we're trying to maintain impartiality, to be fair. Yes. Okay. So how did the business court become part of Iowa court system? Well, a, a little over a decade ago, uh, then Justice Daryl Hecht um, chaired a, a large task force studying ways to reform our civil litigation system. It was sort of a who's who of the Iowa bench and bar, a lot of uh, great lawyers and judges from all over the state, and they studied innovative reforms in other jurisdictions. Uh -huh. And out of that task force uh, came a recommendation that to set up a business specialty court. So that recommendation was, uh, if I remember correctly, the, but the pilot program. Started off with a pilot program and and uh, and that worked out. That was very well received, started small, uh -huh. and then we we uh, we made it a permanent um, part of our trial court docket. So it started with a pilot program and now it's permanent. So we can assume it has been a success. A resounding success. That's uh, amazing. The, so the lawyers are voting with their feet. So we have a lot of repeat customers, some very experienced trial court or uh, trial lawyers uh, um, routinely use the business court judges. And we've added on 
uh, additional judges to, to meet demand. And along the way, it, it originally required a unanimous consent of all parties. And, but we, we saw the benefits of the program and cost savings and you know, special expertise that, that we decided to expand it to allow any party in the case to, to request a transfer to business court. If that was opposed, the chief judge of that district would would rule, and and most of those motions have been granted, and those cases have come in. But that led to a a larger number of business court cases and a need to add judges. And the way you put it, success counted by the footsteps that brought in the business court. I, I like that 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 way to look at it. And we also survey um, the litigants, the 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 individual business people, and and their lawyers. Um, at the end of the case, and those surveys have come back with very high high remarks for the quality and efficacy of the judging and the process. That's amazing. And can anybody transfer the cases to the business court, or does it need to have a specific requirement to be accepted? So, so the the categories. There's a, a uh, we have. A, if you go to our website, there's a the you know, navigate, you click a district court drop down box to business court and, and you'll find the memorandum of operation, but it, it lists the types of cases that are eligible. And generally business on business with 200,000 or more claimed in compensatory damages. You can also come in with some injunctive or declaratory relief, but typical cases will be a, a dispute between businesses for breach of contract, also trade secrets, IP, intellectual property cases. And a lot of the cases have been um, uh, internal disputes within corporations, a minority shareholder not getting along with their business partners. And some of these can be intensely emotional, but also involve uh, highly specialized expert testimony on valuations for these business breakups can be like a, a divorce of family businesses and judge with that a good background in in business litigation can bring a lot to uh, help these cases proceed faster and and more efficiently as you have said there's a lot of specialization going on with the judges and it almost feels like there's a lot of benefit of having uh, the cases be seen in the business court could name something that's like been really beneficial uh, having the cases transferred to the business courts. Yeah, well, of course, uh, um, you know, businesses considering locating in Iowa or expanding in Iowa, they they need and and are entitled to expect a well functioning court system to to handle disputes efficiently um, and at lower costs. So with with our business court system getting the the double judging assigned um, and the continuity. So in some of our districts. You may not get an assigned trial judge. You may have it dependent on what mo motion, what month your summary judgment motion comes up or your trial judge. You may get a, a judge unfamiliar with the case. And with the business court, that learning curve doesn't have to be replicated each time a new judge comes in because you're going to have one trial judge from start to finish and then the settlement conference judge. So there are a lot of benefits to that faster more accurate rulings, um, additional resources. Uh, there's a dedicated staff attorney that helps because a lot of these cases, they have really good lawyers, but they also involve a lot of um, challenges for the court on uh, uh, cutting edge legal issues, for example. So when you talk about how much time it takes for the cases to go through, especially when we talk about the business court cases that's been taken by the courts, does it usually take longer for the specialized business courts compared to other courts? And that's why we have business courts started? Well, I think with the business court judges, they will take a, case, a complex case and get it resolved quite often faster than it if it remained on the general civil docket because you have the extra judging and, and resources and, and expertise. And they, they have a lot of discretion to be innovative. So whatever the lawyers and parties in that case, whatever would help or make the most sense, they may involve phased discoveries, bifurcating issues for trial, uh -huh. uh, judicial settlement conference, uh, uh, you, you know, tailored motion practice. Um, but I think this, 
you take the same big messy case, put it in business court, and it's likely to be resolved um, faster than if it had stayed on the general docket. So when you say about the messy case, it probably requires a very talented judge. Could you tell me what kind of judge would you want to be representing from the business court? Good question. And our, our full court will um, pick the judges to serve on the business court. And um, we're looking for a good um, civil litigation experience as lawyers before they went on the bench. We'll, we'll look at their reversal rates and their business court litigation experience on the bench. But these are kind of self-selecting gunners, if you will. They, they're, they're doing extra work and they still are responsible for their general ca caseload, civil, criminal, divorce. Oh. Um, they may be rotating in and out of those. So it's been a very good cooperative effort with the uh, state court administrator, the district court administrators, their colleagues who may be covering the regular docket when they're off in another part of the state on a business court. So they need, um, they, they put an extra effort, sadly for no extra pay, but they volunteered. And uh, again, it's, we're looking for a, a commercial litigation experience, as well as just being out, outstanding judges in terms of temperament, intellect, everything you look for in a judge. It's almost a side gig, if you think about it. R right, although in other states, they the judges will be exclusive to the business court. And I'd like to see us ultimately move in that direction. Um, mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they've got this expertise in business litigation. So the case volume keeps increasing, we get success. And, and if we could spare them the other more routine cases, uh, personally, I think that'd be a, a good thing. We're, we're not there yet. I have a little stat saying initially there were like three judges that began as a business mm -hmm. court. Now we have eight. And mm -hmm. the cases that is, we started in like around 2013 when they begin accepting cases, they filed eight cases. And now in 2023 alone, there's 47 different cases is filed. So what can you derive from that? That, that it's working beautifully. Uh, and um, I think if, if, if it wasn't, then the lawyers would not be trying to transfer into it or consent to it. Or uh, I expect that it will continue to to grow. In some states, though, they'll, they'll dedicate. You know, in Georgia, they have a a, a separate court building in um, Atlanta for for business court cases. And I think Texas is is going in that direction. In other states, where they will do only business court litigation full time and have additional staff attorneys core reporters, staff to, to manage it. Um, we, we are lean and mean in Iowa, great stewards of the tax dollars, but uh, I'd like to see more resources for our business court judges. So the business court system, it is prevalent around other states as well? Yes, yes. Man, many other states have some form of a, of a separate business specialty court docket with dedicated judges. Did our Iowa courts begin taking references to other courts or was it the need that we needed the business court? Yeah, I think Justice Hex uh, task force some um, modeled in particular, New Hampshire was one of the first. Um, and since then we we keep an eye on uh, what other states are doing. There is a, 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 a organization of business court judges that have annual meetings. Uh, one of our current business court judges, John Tallinn in Davenport, he's been to a number of the annual uh, conferences of business court judges. So you can compare mm -hmm. notes and get sort of cross fertilization of ideas from what other states are doing. So what has been overall response of the litigants and attorneys who have had cases resolved by the business court? Um, again, the survey responses give, give the judges uh, and the court high marks. So I think they're getting good judicial services. Um, mm. And so the system's working as designed. We have the right people serving as business court judges. Um, and if the caseload continues to increase at the same rate, we may need to do a few more things, such as mm. free those judges up from other cases, if they're willing, or uh, 
add on some more staff attorneys, but, but they're making it work now. We're extremely grateful for our, our dedicated business court judges and, and staff attorney. And thank you so much for your time, Justice Waterman. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Vash. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And for our second guest to talk about business court and some insight, we have Judge David Nelmark. Keep listening. Welcome back. My next guest is Judge David Nelmark. Judge Nelmark was appointed to Dresser Court in 2019 and is currently one of the assigned judges for the business court. Welcome to In the Balance, Judge Nelmark. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time to take a little bit of time off your work, and we'll be talking about work itself again. So could you tell me what actually do you do? Well, I, I judge the cases just like I would with anything else that's on my docket. But in business court, you're assigned either as a primary judge or as a settlement judge. And my role differs depending on which of those two roles I've been assigned. So you have option to choose either the primary judge or the settlement judge, or is it you are assigned by somebody else? I'm assigned by state court administration. So I don't get to pick which of the two roles that I do, but they hand out the assignments in such a way that each of us has about the same number of primary judge cases versus settlement judge cases. And what would be the difference between primary judge and settlement judge? The primary judge is similar to my normal role in the district court, where you handle everything that happens during the course of the litigation. If there are hearings, if there are discovery disputes, anything that needs to be addressed by the court all the way up through trial and post-trial motions. The settlement judge is very different, and that's something I do only in the business court cases. You basically function as a mediator, just like a private mediator that might be hired by the parties to resolve the dispute. You get together with the two sides, see if they can work out a resolution that they both agree with. And if they do, then the case is resolved in that fashion and it does not proceed to trial. Okay, that feels like two different skill set for each of the roles. Does all of the judges take part in being either of two or some judges do not take specific roles? All of the judges on the business court do both. I, we've all been selected based on our business experience or our litigating business cases before we became judges. So I suspect that all of us have been through that mediation process as an attorney. In my case, I also went through training to serve as a mediator before I became a judge. How does your process for handling a business court case differ from your case of handling civil uh, case? It, it is a civil case. Civil. The, the way it would differ from a normal civil case on my docket, there's a few things. First, I know I'm going to have that case all the way through trial. On a normal case, at least in Polk County, we change our docket every year or two. So I might start on the case, but then it, another judge will handle it before it ultimately goes to trial. When I'm the primary judge on a business court case, I've got it all the way through. So I can invest more time in the case in the beginning because I know I'm going to have it throughout and it won't be handed off to someone else before that knowledge becomes useful. The second thing is that in a business court case, all of the parties are represented, meaning they all have attorneys. That allows me to be more flexible. If the attorneys for all the parties involved agree on something, I'm more likely to go along with it because I trust that all, uh -huh. all of the counsel are experienced and they know what they're doing and, and the best way to move the case forward. And then I think the third thing is that I tend to be more proactive. I might reach out to the parties, see if they need a status conference, try to keep track on what's going because there's a lot of cases, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of parties involved in the cases, often a lot of expert witnesses. And if things aren't kept moving from the get-go, then you can result in last minute continuances where you have to move the trial date, which is not good for anyone. And are the litigants required to file cases in the county where the business judge is? As we know, there are only a limited number of judges assigned. No, the case is filed just like any other civil lawsuit. So they pick a county where there is jurisdiction, and then after the case is filed, either party can request that the case be transferred to the business court. So at the time they make that request, they don't know which business court judge they'll get, and therefore they don't know which county that business court judge is located. But what's also interesting is even when the case is assigned to a particular business court judge to serve as the primary judge, 
the case stays in the county in which it was filed. So if there is an in-person hearing or the trial ultimately takes place, the business court judge travels to that county rather than the other way around. The business court judge travels to the county itself. So I'm guessing your travel time and other activity to handle business courts expands your role compared to previous role as a district court judge, right? It does. In district court, I'm assigned to Judicial District 5C. So that's primarily Polk County, though my actual jurisdiction is all of District 5. So there's six or seven other counties that I can hear cases in. But with the business court, my jurisdiction is statewide. So I can travel to any one of the 99 counties that are out there and, and have traveled to quite a few of them in the past few years. That feels a lot interesting and you get to know Iowa a lot differently. It, it's interesting to see the different courthouses. Uh, they, they look different. Some of them are quite old. Some of them are quite new. And every jurisdiction has it, its own quirks, but it keeps things interesting to go out and see how the various clerks and deputies and everyone else offer uh, operates from county to county. What is the benefit of parties involved in having this kind of cases transferred to a business court? There are several, and, and we've already talked about a couple of them. I think a huge one is that you get the same judge throughout the entire case. So as I said, in Polk County, we rotate dockets every year. You get a new judge, you have to teach them all of the complex facts of your case and uh, makes it less efficient to get to a resolution. If you are in other counties, you might have a different judge every week that comes in to hear on your motions because it's motion day on that county and a particular judge is assigned. So with one judge throughout, there's just there's efficiencies. They know in each hearing, they've already got the facts of the case. They know the parties. They know what's going on. Uh, we've also talked about the benefit of having a settlement judge. Business court cases are the only ones in Iowa where you get the state to basically pay for a mediator to try to resolve your case. So that can keep your costs down. And also the business court judges, in my experience, are very effective in getting cases settled, perhaps more effective than a number of private mediators that are out there. What kind of benefits do you align for Iowans to have business court deciding their cases? I think the benefit to the community as a whole is that when you pull out cases that qualify for business court and have that assigned judge who can deal with all those complicated issues, it free ups, frees up the time for the district court judge who would otherwise have the case. And you know it, it, those efficiencies that I talked about with one judge handling a complex matter that might have a lot of hearings that might take a period of years, that same time is freed up for that district court judge to handle criminal cases, family law cases, things that are faster uh, and can get a lot of them done in the same amount of time that it would take for them to handle that one complex case throughout. So when I talked with Justice Waterman, he told me about business court judges as you take this as a additional part of your work. There are no additional perks for being involved in the business court. We don't get any additional salary. Um, we all do it because we find it interesting but it is on top of our normal course load. Now, obviously, if I'm in another county trying a case for a week or two, I'm not trying a case at the same time in my home county, but I still have things coming into my docket, motions I have to rule on and that sort of thing. Um, we put in a little extra time, but I think it's worth it given the benefits to the branch as a whole and to the, the citizens of Iowa, as we've already discussed from having three judges to eight currently. And the case loads in 2013, when the business court started was eight cases being filed to 47 cases in 2023 alone. So what do you think is the factors for this increase? There are two big reasons in my mind. The first is that there was a change in the process. It used to be that both parties to the case had to agree to go to the business court. And what happens then is if one party wants to do something, the other party, as a matter of principle, might just say no, because they think if the other side must want it, it must be bad for them. Under the current rules, one party can request a move into the business court, and it could be granted as long as it meets the eligibility criteria. So that's a game changer. I think the other thing is that the the results have shown that the business court works. It's doing what it's intended. 
attorneys are enjoying their experience there. So when they get another case that qualifies, they're recommending it to their clients because they like how it worked for them before. And, and I don't mean the result necessarily because a, a lot of cases do settle just like anything else, but they have found those same efficiencies that I talked about in the process. They like judges that can be more flexible and proactive. And the, the survey results that we've had back bear that out, that the participants are enjoying their experience in business court. This has been a very insightful conversation, and I want to thank you, Judge Nelmark, for your time and hope this was a fruitful listening for our viewers and get to know a little bit more about Iowa Judicial Branch and the Business Court. Thank you for listening to In the Balance, the Iowa Judicial Branch podcast. We'll be back on our next episode next month right here.